for everybody. So I've got the track for Lovers of Losing Game from Amy Winehouse. It's originally from the Advanced Mixing course, recorded in that room there. And I'm just going to go through some sort of basic ideas of just processing that I like to do to sounds, just to make them sound a little bit more interesting. So I find a lot of students working on their DAWs, when I mark it in the mixing class, I'm always finding I'm looking for character and individuality on the sounds. And so that's what I'm sort of going to go across about just trying to show you some techniques that I use regularly when I'm mixing other people's third parties' uh, uh, tracks. And so just give you an idea of, you know, a few ideas that you might pick up and uh, like. So everybody will know the track. So there you get a gist of what we did on the advanced mixing course. They did a really good job on recording it. So I took the stems, loaded them into Pro Tools, and then just went about my business to try and make them sound a little bit more interesting. So the first place I started on was on the drum kit. The trouble with that room out there in Studio uh, One has a lot of reflections on it. So the students had recorded the kick drum and snare drum, most probably with too much mic pre on it, so there's lots of early reflections on all the sounds. So as soon as I got the drums up, I was sitting there fighting to try and add some sort of punch to it. So I straight away went into the audio and chopped away the kick drum and snare drum and just actually just had the dry sounds itself, just so I could then use the room sounds to actually generate the actual real space. And so on the main sounds, I've got all the punch of what I'm re actually requiring. So I started off with that. My drum stem sounds like this. So let's just... Uh So you can see it's now got quite a punchy sound. I thought initially when I was going to mix this, I was going to have to start adding samples, and I didn't really want to do that. So I AB'd against the original track, and I just noticed on the original track it had a bright snare, had a pretty thuddy sort of low-end kick drum, and so I just went about my business trying to sort that out. So the first thing I did on the actual kick drum is I had two mics. I had a D25 and a D112. I straight away just got rid of the D, uh, D25. It was just a bit too subby, and I went with the D112. First thing that I found was that I actually just wanted the fundamental frequency to come across. So I think I had my fundamental frequencies around, uh, where are we on, three? I think I worked it out as around about 120 or something like that on this kick drum. So I decided to take the next harmonic out just so it actually made it super punchy and just direct sounding. I then used a bit of R bass on it. I don't know if you will know that plugin if I just mute the other part of the drums. It just generates a nice sort of low thud without having to boost seriously lows of low end. So I just went about this. So without it, that's without it. So it's generating a sort of more contemporary low end. So as whereas most students would go into sort of crazy EQ world, and I'd see Mount Vesuvius at plus 12. I've generated it with our bass. And it sounds a lot more sounds a lot more contemporary and a lot tighter and just sort of the resonance I want. And so I found the resonant frequency on it about 65, and that's the one that I sort of boosted up. I then moved on to the actual snare drum. Just uh, double checking that. With the snare drum, like I say, on the original mix, it's super bright. So I was quite surprised because I set up my initial mix and then I just A-B'd it and straight away I was like, wow, that's not what I was expecting. So on this, I ended up using R-A-X, R-A-X, and it generates high frequency harmonics in a sort of nice way. And so the original snare drum, if we just uh, bypass these, uh, if we just give you an idea of what it's sounding like. So the snare drum originally is like this. So it's just a pretty regular sort of snare drum sound. So then I added the axe onto it. Straight away it added a nice lot of brightness and attack to it. And then I thought Amy Winehouse's version was super bright. So then I went to the Neve 1073, Shep 73 from Waves. And it has a fixed top end at 12K. And so I thought that would be ideal for this. So then I added it. So then I just added it in. And you can see it just adds a lot sort of high frequency. 
then you'd most probably get in your DAW if it was Logic Ableton or Pro Tools. So I just used that for it. So then I had the kick drum and snare drum. And I just got a sort of a nice sort of crisp sound and a thud on the low kick drum. The other thing I noticed on the track was they had sort of the kick drum was a bit peculiar on the original mix. So I thought of I'll generate something quite peculiar and I went about I took the room microphones, I compressed them, and then I gated them off the actual kick drum, they actually side chained off it. So I then got this effect to add in. So it's just a thunky sort of room sound. So I just thought I'd add that in to my actual kick drum. Without it, it just sounds dry. I'm just adding a reflection sort of sound in with it. With a snare drum, add the under snare. And it just adds a nice sort of space around it, rather than it being completely dead. I then went on to the hi-hat. Hi-hat doesn't play a big part in this actual track. I used a bit of REQ6. And I just rolled off sort of the low 200s. You just didn't need any of that sort of frequency in the actual track. And I then added the sort of the John Lennon sort of slapback. I didn't go to, I wasn't trying to recreate the other mix. I was just taking sort of ideas from it. And I just thought I'd give it a bit of movement on it. So we then get a bit, and it just get this. Just adding that in, it gives it a nice little shuffle on it. And just adds a nice bit of space to it. Then with the rooms, so I just stuck um, CLA76 on it, which is Chris Lord Algae's 1176. And I thought I'd just smash it up a bit because the room's quite small. It didn't need to be the big rock sound. It just needed to have a bit of movement to it. So without it, we just uh, it just sounds a little bit like that room sounds. And I just added a little bit of oomph to it with the, uh, the 1176 by using a slow attack, fast release, 8 to 1 ratio. And you can see that it's doing a, a fair amount of uh, gain reduction to it. So then when we put the drums back together, bum, 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 we get this sound. Also on the Amy Winehouse thing, it had a nice sort of reverb sound going on. They did originally record a little uh, spring sound on the actual session itself. But I felt that it needed something a little bit different to that. So I went about sort of adding my own sort of uh, feel to it. So I've got the Abbey Road plate, I used it on type A. I set it to one second, I think. And then a the thing I like to do with plates is I like to saturate them. So I find generally digital plates don't really sound like a real plate when you go into a real studio. So the way I sort of go about it is by adding some saturation to my plate, I start to generate harmonic frequencies that will then start to cut through your track and also just give you loads of sort of depth to the actual reverb. So, so there's our normal sound and then without it, it just sounds a little bit nonsense. And then we do that. It's just adding a bit more depth and a bit more grip to it. So then when I add the drums back in. And it just adds a nice sort of bright sort of plate to it. It's not too long and it just seems to fit the track quite nicely. The other thing I felt with this is I want to compress it. So you could have compressed this with a digital compressor if you wanted, but I just thought I'd use the Kramer Tape plugin and I'll run it quite hot. So just like JC was doing it, I think I might have been a bit more violent than uh, the way he was using it. So, <laughs> you know, I'd always check it out. So without it, there's the normal drums. I just like what it does to the attack of the actual kick drum. It just gives me a nice sort of whack to it. And so I had that going across. The next part I would go on to is the actual bass. So with the bass, it just sort of underpins on this song. And so I thought DBX 160, and it's just taking out some of the actual dynamic range out of it. So if we just listen to it uh, flat, so the bass does on its own. It's just that sound. Then we add the 160 back in on it. And just tightens up a little bit. I then wanted a bit more sort of low end. So like I did with the kick drum, I've done the same with the actual bass. I'm just generating a low frequency part to it. I could have added an equalizer to it, but I kind of like sometimes using our bass just for its sort of harmonic uh, uh, detail that it adds to sounds. So then we have that. So without it, with it, it's making it a nice sub. It's also reduced some of the actual mid frequencies in it as well. And it's just made it more what I wanted. I wanted it to be quite subby. I didn't want it to have a lot of grit because in this track, the other overdubs have a load of mid already on the actual sounds itself. 
And then, of course, I did the, the point bank favourite. I side-chained it. So here I set bus 11 from the actual kick drum. There will be. <laughs> and uh, it just kept it out of the way. It didn't really warrant it. So I just thought I'd do that. It would just help sort of help my kick drum just come actually through. And then the last part I did is what I like to do with basses is once I've got my bass, sometimes it might be several different channels. I might have a DI, an amp. I might have loads of saturation. I'll then group the whole lot and then just give it a final EQ to actually scoop out this rubbish that's in this part. So around, I always look around the two to 400 hertz, have a look at what's going on, and then try and reduce that, just trying to get that really tight, sort of low fundamental part of it, rather than the distracting sort of next harmonic up. And so when we add the two together, we get this. So the punch is in the kick drum, the bass is sort of doing its little job as well. And it seems to sort of have some sort of you know, character to it. The drums don't sound just like a few mics in the room. They sound on their way to, to being a sort of a contemporary sort of sound. So the next thing that I sort of got onto was the piano. So with the piano, here is our regular piano sound. Where's my bus from piano? There's my piano group. Um, so here we have the regular piano sound, which I left flat, surprisingly. So they just had that sound. Sounds quite nice, but I'm never one to leave things as they are. So I set up a bus five and six, and what I've got is two sort of mono channels on five and six. So what I did is I like to mass compress pianos. I really like sort of hear harmonics, the upper harmonics in pianos, and just all the noise that's around the note. So it doesn't just sound clean and precise and boring, shall we say. So. I've added a 1176 on it, it's on a medium attack, fast release. It's on 4 to 1, it should have been on 8 to 1, but it's on 4 to 1, we'll leave it at that. I find that with the digital emulations, they might never quite hit what the analog one sounds like. So you might notice that I've added two instances of it. I sometimes add four, it depends on what the actual sound is. So the sound that we're getting off one compressor is this. So we just have it on one side for a moment. And then we add the second one in. And we can see that it really brings in. And it just brings out sustain and just detail and just interest in the actual sound. I also thought I want to cheat a little bit. I want to have a stereo sort of sound going across the actual speakers. So I just delayed the right hand channel by 31 milliseconds with no feedback parts to it. And the whole point was I wanted the piano to sort of ripple across the actual stereo field rather than it just be sort of sitting just sort of box down the stereo. So when we put the, the parts back together, we get this. Without the compression. Just sounds a bit dead. So now we're doing that. So it's just adding loads of sort of like early reflections to it and just sounding a bit more interesting. It doesn't necessarily need any actual reverb. And if you look, I haven't actually added any reverb to it because it's done that part to me. So it's just a good idea of sort of having a listen around the actual sounds, trying to get the most out of them rather than adding most probably 100 million other reverb plugins itself. So with the bass and drums. And so it chimes away, it's in the mid frequency, and it's just got loads of character. Straight away you can hear it, and it just sounds, there's loads of sustain, and loads of just little weird sounds going on in it, rather than it just sounding a bit dead like the original sound did. So then we move on to the other fun sounds that are in the track, where there's a, there's a chop guitar that's just accenting the actual snare hits. So, sort of like a Motown sort of guitar. And so I just went about trying to sort that out. And so the actual flat sound is like this. Oh, sorry, just the flat sound, it's like this. So that's the actual flat sound. I thought, that sounds okay, but we can actually just make it a little bit more interesting. So straight away, I added an oral excited to it from Waves, and it just adds a bit of high end to it. Without it. It just does a high end presence part to it. I then felt I'd just compress it a bit 
with this, I've sort of taken off some of the transient. I found with the snare drum, I was starting to get too much transient on that hit. I just wanted the guitar to hit, but I didn't want to actually hear the front click of it. So I've used uh, a fast attack, fast release, eight to one. And then it just softens it off a little bit. So instead of it going kick, it just goes, it just has the actual sustain part to it. Then I went on to the Helios EQ. So this is another Waves package part, and I just added 2.8K on the mids. So it's quite a spiky, harmonic -y sort of uh, equalizer. So it makes things quite harsh sounding. And then I just used REQ6 to take out the sort of annoying, th uh, where are we at? 3.3K, it became a little bit annoying. So if we then add those elements back together, we get this. So straight away, it needed some space and depth. They originally recorded a little slap back sound, so I kept that in there, and I panned it over to the same side as the guitar. And the main thing I wanted to get was sort of a spring reverb element part to it that was quite interesting. So I used Manny Marroquin's sort of spring reverb. Well, it's a chamber reverb, it's as close as I can get to it. And then I added, uh, I side-chained it from the actual guitar itself. So whenever the hit hits, the, actual, the reverb dips down, and then as soon as the initial transient's gone, it then releases the actual sound and just gives me sort of a clean clunk, but then the actual reverb element part to it. And then I just added a bit of sort of 700 hertz to it, a bit of a freaky frequency, but that's the one that I was sort of looking for. I sort of wanted like a low mid to it, so then I got that. And it just made a nice sort of space to it. So you can see that we're getting the initial tack hit and then we're getting the, the pre-delay element of the actual side chain coming off the actual guitar itself. So that got me the basic part of it. There then was a second guitar that played over the other side. So I initially got it, the tuning wasn't great on it, so I had to melodyne the whole guitar and that was a bit fun in the sense that it sort of did mess the sound up a bit, but I kind of liked it because it made it sound like a sample and I sort of went, okay, that's kind of cool in the sense that on the original track, it's like a DI sound and it doesn't sound very good. The rest of the mix sounds great, but there's this guitar that's sort of stuck on, so I thought, let's kind of ignore what's on the original and do our own thing. So I went into GTR, I never normally use this, I just went into, I had an idea of the actual sound, so you can see that I've gone to town on this really. I've sort of changed the EQ on it, compressed it, added a spring reverb, and then overdriven the actual reverb at the end of it because I wanted to give it some sort of character to it. So the whole sound is done using overdrive to do the similar sort of thing. So then I got this. So if I turn off the effects, that's the original sound. Straight away, it just made it sound a little bit more crust, crusty and a bit, a bit more like the sound that I was actually looking for while we're having fun here. So the next part I added was Vitamin. I don't know if you, any of you have used Vitamin. It does like a harmonic distortion in various different bands. And so you can start to make bands of your sound sound a little bit thicker in the mids or whichever frequency you actually want to do that. And I kind of like that on this guitar, so I added a bit of that. Without it. With it. Did a nice thing in the low mids that I was sort of looking for. It sort of just took the, the sharpness out of it and just added a thicker sort of low mid part that I was really looking for. And then I use REQ6. So I've just taken out three harmonics that I decided to just made it sound a little bit ugly. And that's so I got that. And it just sounds a little bit more sharp about the frequency that I wanted. The last little part of the puzzle was, over the whole thing, I decided that I just wanted to start gluing this together. So some people do like using mixed bus compression, some people don't. I generally mix my whole track without mixed bus and then I add it at the end. It feels like you're getting a bag of sweets on a Friday, in the sense that you just get this additional little thing that just makes you feel good. So it also pushes you to get your, your mix to actually sound great anyway. And then you get this little bit of compression and then a little bit of top end. So I just went about doing some of that. So the chain that I used was just tickling it with an SSL compressor on two to one. So I'm halving dynamic range on it. I'm just starting to glue it together slightly. And it's only tickling it a little bit. 
the main thing that's doing the work on here is the J37. So on this, I'm using the tape and I'm kicking into it quite hard and I'm also saturating it to just give it some sort of uh, flavour. I also decided, ooh, I've got wow and flutter here. So I just started to change the actual pitch of it to actually just modulate it and also the amplitude. And I just thought it would give it a little bit more interest to the sound. And so, so if we take it off, just without it, with it, you can see it does the whole mid thing and just sort, sorts out the sound. Then a tiny little bit of pull tech. So if you're looking for high end, you're going to find the pull tech is going to be the best high end you've got in your DAW. So I generally use it on a narrow band, and then just a little bit of it in the 12K. And then I cheated. I thought I'd just add a little bit of width to it, just using S1 Imager from Waves. So it's just like a mid-side program, and it just gave it a little bit of width on it that I decided sort of just suited the track. So the whole point is just to sort of get you into thinking about how do you make the sounds more interesting and always pushing yourself. So whenever you've finished your sound, go another 10% because the thing that you don't have that I've had is I have people kicking my butt in the studio, the producer, record company, whoever it is. They're always going, oh, at the time you think, I don't, yeah, I don't want to do this. But then when you hear the results, you get the point of it. So whenever you're working on your own projects, finish your project and then work another 10% on it and also just try things that are extreme. And then you'll just find your mixes start to improve from where they are. Never do with just that first basic thing that you did. Okay, thanks guys. Brilliant.